you've also watched like seven hours of Sandman. Ten which, episodes. Which is like uh, something that people must have been looking forward to. I have never read the comic. Not me neither. I am uh, I, I, a... <laughs> As a as a person growing up, I was a huge fan of Neil Gaiman. I think as I hit my sort of mid to late twenties, I started to recognise his um, his plot beats and the direction that he likes to take stories in, and his style of dialogue. And sort of once you key into the way that he writes, uh, I don't, I don't well, won't say I fell out of love with his writing, but I I. You know, once you get something, it's demystified. It it takes something kind of away from it. So I was sort of half looking forward to Sandman, looking forward to it with a bit of trepidation. But actually, um, for all the dramatic license that's been taken with this adaptation of the comics for Netflix, it definitely feels like the spirit of the comics is there and the spirit of Neil Gaiman's writing is there. And that's kind of mostly for better, a little bit for worse. Um, I think if you look at any of Neil Gaiman's adaptations to the big or small screen, the thing that sticks out most is his brand of kind of offbeat dialogue does not really translate into the mouths of actors. It, it is fun to read on the page, but when you make people say it out loud, it sounds a bit weird. Um, and that was true with American Gods. It was true with Stardust. It was true with uh, Neverwhere back in the 90s. <laughs> like, yeah, American Gods went off the rails. Yeah. Maybe um, Never was, was on the rails in the first place. I oh, I don't know. I quite like the first season. I, anyway. did, I did, but it had to. Anyway, yes. Yeah. Anyway, indeed. <laughs> yes. I'm very um, much looking forward to this. It is this good. Is... It is a good genre show. Mm. The, the really weird thing about it is that if you are familiar with the comics, you will instantly recognize it as being the stories from the first and second volumes of comics. Um, and if you don't, if you have never read one of these comics in your life, which is going to be most of the audience, it's going to make the season look a bit odd because it sticks really interestingly to that structure completely rigidly in in the respect that it's almost like two mini seasons of a show you have a five episode storyline a interval of one episode which is um fun character study and then you have a four episode storyline and it's there is only one through line which is this guy behind me the corinthian who is a nightmare created by the main character dream who is the uh, lord morpheus the god of dreams and he created a nightmare the nightmare has gone out into the world um, and is out of control and that is the only through line for the 10 episodes they are almost standalone i got man to go on a very quick digression <laughs> i absolutely hate it when people say oh you know serialized tv these days it's like a long movie like screw that people should learn how to write television in an episodic way that is enjoyable to watch for one episode at a time um sandman is absolutely not that it is like two three-hour movies with kind of like two short half-hour interludes stitched together in the middle and taken as two slightly overstuffed over long three hour movies i think it's hugely enjoyable i i think it it holds together really really well the the stories have different casts they have different ideas um and they are just like it's just dark fantasy done really well the design work is great the the scripting on the whole is really great um, the performance is David Thewlis is in the first story, and he is absolutely brilliant, as he always is. Um, the, mem the cast members of the second story struggle a bit more to begin with, but definitely hit their stride. 
by the end of the season. And it, it's just a really sharp, like 10 part dose like a, of like, like an easy six out of 10, is it? You know what? <laughs> it's, it's more. It's more. I know. I'm reading an eight from you. It I, sounds I think phenomenal. it might be. I've I, just got to remind everybody. This is on Netflix. Yeah. How did how did this happen? I mean, yeah. I'm staring down the, the barrel of Jamie Foxx in Night Shift on Friday. I know. And, and, it's and like, I'm thinking, is it going to be a five or a six? I'm not you, really, you know, it, might, it will, probably won't be a four, but it'll be really lucky to be a and you, seven. And you're you telling that, me that, that Sandman I, is good and faithful <laughs> and accurate and it'll please fans. And that's people it. will be, I mean, that's just well, nonsense. Now. You're lying. Let's let's not go too far. There are some fans that it definitely won't please. There is some gender swapping and some racial diversifying amongst the characters. That is going to not please the people on the prey thread. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I, I, it, it feels true to the spirit of of Neil Gaiman's writing, and and that feels good. And because it's two separate stories. Yeah. It never suffers from the stupid Netflix lag of you have to watch five episodes before anything happens. They yeah. know they've got four hours to tell one this one story and another four hours to tell this other story. So things mostly keep moving. And that is or, to its benefit. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, Sounds I'm looking awesome. Forward. It does. Sounds more great. TV I'm going to watch. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not perfect. Like character development leaves a lot to be desired. In fact, it makes absolutely no sense in some situations. Yeah, after this podcast, you're going to go away and write the review and go, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't like it. It was a four. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was all right, really. Um, <laughs> no, it sounds, it sounds really good. Yes. I'm sold. Um, good. I am sold too. Review um, incoming, hopefully yeah. tomorrow. Can I, can I sell you guys on Michelle Moynihan battling Jason Clark? in a sky movie with the help of jay courtney no okay uh can i sell you on jamie fox doing a vampire comedy action out on netflix no 100 no okay hang on uh, jay, jay courtney and uh jason clark is it a terminator genital sequel <laughs> no, it can easily be oh. talk about that yeah um, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a low bar for, for this netflix film to limbo under yeah it? i think i think they'll make it uh and we got nope mark who gets nope. who gets to re, re, review nope mark's i'm, doing I, nope. I'm mark's, going for nope mark's god doing damn nope. you mark yeah. yeah sorry what can i say already by the way months ago i said i bet it's about this Recently revealed, it definitely is about what I said it was yeah. about. Yeah, I'm a winner, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I look forward for Jordan Peele disappointing me for the third straight time. So, Ooh. so, oh, uh, Kaz, why have you given this to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is another Paul Anderson situation. I think <laughs> best Paul Anderson movie. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Joint, best, joint best, best. I think you're by any director with the words Paul and Anderson in his it, name. It, it's the best Paul Anderson movie that doesn't have a huge prosthetic penis in it. Uh, there to drink your milkshake i just think <laughs> it up <laughs> seek yeah. help i did i did <laughs> you brought milkshake 